Mission five, start. Hey everybody and welcome back to Video Game Esoteric on our continuing series Metal Slug Madness where I review and take a look at the evolutionary history of the entire Metal Slug franchise. Today we have an interesting episode for you guys because we're going to be taking a look at In the Hunt by Irem Corporation because this is basically Metal Slug Zero. Before we get too far involved though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like, subscribe, and that notification bell definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, what we do here, we have a Patreon link in the description below as well. But the developers of this game, including Kazuma Kujo, the lead director of it, basically went on to form Nazca Corporation, and they're the creators of the Metal Slug franchise. So all the team that worked on Metal Slug made in the hunt. And if you can't tell already, there is a lot of shared inspiration between the games. Now, in the hunt is basically a submarine-based shmup. Now, it's not a scrolling shmup because you do have control over how fast that screen moves forward, but it's definitely more in the shmup genre than it is in the run and gun, but it's kind of a hybrid of both. But you can just see via the graphical style alone that this is Metal Slug before Metal Slug came a thing, and obviously in the Metal Slug game, some of them, you do get to go into a submarine and fight underwater. And you can see where all of that inspiration came from, as well as all the massive projectiles on the screen and just the crazy action going on. And that's why I wanted to talk about In the Hunt, because to talk about Metal Slug, we need to talk about the developers behind Metal Slug and where they came from. And this was an awesome game in arcades that I have played on an original cabinet, including having the marquee with the floating submarine with water all around it. I'll try to leave a link in the description below to a photo of the cabinet because it is quite incredible as far as arcade art goes. But playing this game, you can just see where the Metal Slug formula came from. It's basically almost Metal Slug, but they weren't quite there yet. And the huge difference is you were in a submarine the entire game during In the Hunt, or in Metal Slug, you get different vehicles, but you're of course on foot as well. But if you look at the graphics and you look at the detail in the sprites in the background, you can see all that amazing art that we were going to get when Metal Slug actually came out. All of the artists at Irem Corporation that went on to form Nazca, they were absolutely at the top of their game when it came to sprite work and 2D art and using colors. And this is where they started getting their chops to be able to make a metal slug and that's why it's so much fun to talk about in the hunt because it is rare to have a game that is so similar to a franchise that blows up but to still have enough differences that you can look at it and see what's going on and how the series evolves to get where it needs to be. And I'm surprised when they were making the Metal Slug games, they never made another sequel to In the Hunt. Now I get that Irem may have owned the rights to it, but it would have been fun to see a shmup made by Nazca that had a similar vibe to it because obviously they just made Metal Slug games, which is not at all a bad thing. They are incredible, but I would have loved to have just seen what they could have done in different genres as well. But you'll see here as we move on to the second stage, I love these transitions, that radar submarine look to them. It's a really nice way of having a screen transition, and that's the great thing about In the Hunt, is every single second is packed with detail, it's packed with action, it's packed with art. There is no point in time where this game just takes a rest and says, we're going to coast for a minute or two. And definitely watch the entire video, because the boss that I'm going to show in the end is one of my favorite arcade bosses of all time. But you'll see here as we've moved on, we're in a lightning storm, we have these rockets we need to dodge. A lot of what makes In the Hunt great is screen space management. You really need to worry about what's in front of you, what's behind you, what's above you, and what's below you, because everything is going to be a threat in all four axes. But as good as this game is, it also sounds incredible, so give me about 20 seconds to get you the part that I want to listen to, because just like Metal Slug, the music in this is outstanding. But I also love these bridges here that you have to actually break them a lot of times your path is obstructed and you can't get to where you need to be unless you break something in front of you, like this building here, and it is a nice touch. But like I said, the soundtrack is 10 out of 10 awesome, so go ahead and take a listen and I'll be back in about 45 seconds to a minute and tell you more about why In the Hunt is Metal Slug Zero. But enjoy!
Now the soundtrack is not as upbeat and jazzy as something like Metal Slug, but it still is awesome. But as far as the evolution from In the Hunt to Metal Slug is concerned, the soundtrack, while great, doesn't really remind me anything about Metal Slug. But this game is just absolutely incredible, and it's so much fun to see what the developers at IREM were doing before they formed NASCA. Now, if you want to play this game, I suggest you just emulate it because it emulates perfectly. Because if you are looking for an original PCB, bring your wallet because it is not cheap. Do I think it's worth it? Absolutely. If I say a good one for sale, would I buy it? 100%. But if you just want to check the game out, definitely don't spend the money to collect the PCB because they are definitely not giving them away. But a lot of what I love about In the Hunt too which is how strategic the game is because we need to go underneath this ship here and navigating the water is always going to be dynamic because in some places you have water all over the place in this stage the water is just on like the bottom 20 percent of the screen so you don't have a lot of ability to navigate up and down so now you really need to be worrying about moving laterally left and right to avoid certain different elements and then sometimes the screen will freeze completely and the only way to move forward is to attack that bridge truss down there until we can knock the bridge out. Now that is easier said than done because of course we have a ton of projectiles that we are dodging and it's always going to be a challenge. I will say In the Hunt is an incredibly difficult game. This is on normal and I used a ton of credits getting through it. So if you're putting quarters into this machine in an arcade, you better definitely bring like 60, 80 bucks if you want to see the ending to it because it is very, very difficult. But I do appreciate that about the game. They definitely toned the difficulty down when they got to the Metal Slug franchise, but In the Hunt was for hardcore gamers and you really need to be good at it to really enjoy it. But again, just like in Metal Slug, the boss fights are spectacular. This isn't the boss that I was talking about, but again, it's another kind of like quasi-organic looking beast. I can't tell if that kind of human skin tone is actually flesh over the machine, but that's kind of how I see it as it looks like there's a little bit of a face in the middle as well. But you can see how Metal Slug got so many great boss fights because games like In the Hunt were doing it first. And we'll be looking at Geostorm, the other game that came before Metal Slug, and that is a run and gun, and a little bit closer to the Metal Slug formula that we would know and love. But In the Hunt is just so incredible, I could not talk about it on this series. Now, interestingly, this game has slowed down in the same ways that Metal Slug has slowed down, so I feel like the developers of this game were more interested in packing the screen with as much action and artwork as possible compared to wanting the game to run at a fluid 60 frames a second. So you can even see some of the design philosophy that would be used for Metal Slug in this game when it came to its performance. But I just love everything about In the Hunt, and the developers of the game in interviews have said that before they started making it, it was agreed upon that they were going to be making a shmup. But when they decided to start development of the game, they wanted to do something different. And one of the main things that they did differently is not have the screen automatically scroll on you. And if you remember Metal Slug 3, the video I did a few weeks ago, take a look if you haven't yet. This reminds me of those giant eels with the names like Barbie that are coming out of the wall. This is just a smaller version of that same giant eel. And you can see even some of the characters and enemy designs are going to be things that in some way, shape, or form end up showing up in the Metal Slug franchise, and that is always fun. But I do love that some of the beasts you get in this game as well. It's not just fighting robots and ships all the time. Now we have this gigantic three-headed Hydra-looking maybe dragon, maybe snake. I don't know with this giant shell on his back. Not sure what beast it's supposed to be, but it's fun no matter how you look at it. But this is In the Hunt, and like I mentioned, this has one of my favorite boss battles in arcade history. This giant stone golem coming up through these ruins as you're trying to navigate around these pillars that you can't shoot down while you have all these mines and enemies coming towards you. It is just 100% intense. And when you get to the top of the screen, the battle gets a lot smaller and you need to knock these pillars down onto his head. I don't know how they came up with this, but I absolutely love it. It is spectacular. And this is where all those massive boss battles in Metal Slug came from. But yeah, that's In the Hunt. It's basically the aquatic version of Metal Slug before Metal Slug actually was a thing, and it was made by all of the same developers that would go on to make the Metal Slug franchise. But we'll be back next week with an episode in the Metal Slug Madness series, taking a look at how the series evolved. Sure to that, do me a huge favor. Go down below, hit like, subscribe, and that notification bell. Definitely helps us out. If you have any questions or comments, so leave them down below, because I love chatting with you guys. But we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.